Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and yes, I got a brand new t-shirt, the Pinky in the Brain. <laughs> yeah. Hey Brain, what do we want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world! <laughs> yeah, I always love this show. I was also part of the segment of Animaniacs. Yeah, so. But that's not here what I'm talking about today, because I know I have all the DVDs. Um, I'm about to review the movie that I just saw last night um, as I celebrated uh, my cousin's birthday. I went to go see the movie Venom. Yes, we are Venom. <laughs> yeah, this is part of the Sony Cinematic Universe, Yeah, which is like Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU. Uh, this is supposed to be a share to uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, which came out last year, which I did enjoy. And while this movie, despite I'm not getting any good reviews from critics, yeah, again, I don't always significantly agree with them, but sometimes I do. On the other hand, I just think it's alright. I mean, it's not bad, it's not great. But it's alright. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but I am going to continue with the review as I speak. It's based on the, the, the comics by Tom McFarlane. Yeah, the same creator who gave us uh, Spawn. See, that's where you can see the Spawn-like quality here. And David uh, Michelini. Yeah. So Tom Hardy now plays the role of Eddie Brock, because I know uh, back in 2007 with Spider-Man 3, we had Topher Grace uh, playing the role of Eddie Brock before he went on to, to become Venom. And sad to say, Spider-Man 3 was a mess. They could have done a lot of awesome things for that character, but this is what happens when Sam Raimi just takes control and decided to focus on other characters, none of which can carry the film very well. And that's why. Too much control with both the studio and the director. And writer, too. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, the movie stars Tom Hardy once again. Uh, Michelle Williams you know, has been in other films, such as uh, Halloween H2O. But she was also in the TV show Dawson's Creek, and then went on to do films like uh, My Week in Maryland. The odds are great and powerful, and, and several others that she's been uh, Riz Ahmed, uh, Scott Hayes, Reed Scott, Jenny Slate, Malonva Walters, and Chris O'Hara. It's written by Jeff Pinkner, Scott Rosenberg, and Kelly Marcel. That's based on the Marvel comic book, once again, by Todd McFarlane and David Michelny. And it's directed by Ruben Fletcher, the same director that gave us Zombieland, who's working on the upcoming sequel. I hope that happens, because I would love to see that. He also directed Gangster Squad, 30 Minutes or Less, and a few others. The movie begins when a bioengineering corporation known as Life Foundation had discovered a comet that's being filled with symbiotic life forms you know, while exploring the new space of all new inhabited worlds. They brought in four samples back to Earth, but one suddenly escapes and causes the ship to crash in Malaysia. The Life Foundation have recovered all three of the samples and transports them to the research facility in San Francisco, California, where we meet a CEO of the company, Carden Drake, who's played by Riz Ahmed. He learns that the Sambots cannot survive without oxygen breathing host, so which rejects all the Sambosis. That's where we meet investigative journalist Eddie Brock, who's played by Tom Hardy, who begins to who begins to read about Drake's human trials and classified documents in the possession of his fiancée 
Anne Wyeen, who's played by Michelle Williams, who's an attorney involved in preparation for a lawsuit defense for Life Foundation. But during an interview with Drake, you know, part of his uh, news program that he has, yeah, the Eddie Brock News Report, uh, he tries to confront Drake uh, with a story um, involving the allegations that's coming from documents that only leads to both Brock and Waylon to lose their jobs, yet alone their relationship. So six months later, Brock now lives um, at an old apartment in San Francisco, all alone, nothing in his life, while Drake is getting closer to achieving all these successful symbosis, you know, trying to bring in a lot of hosts to join in to see how it works, but it's really starting to affect everyone. But Brock is being approached uh, at a local uh, liquor store by Doris Scurf, who's one of Drake's uh, scientists, and she's played by Jenny Slate, who actually disagrees with Drake's methods and wants to help Brock expose to him. So she helps Brock break into the research uh, facility to search for evidence all the way around, but then he begins to spot a homeless woman that's being taken, you know, the same homeless woman who Brock had met and actually taken all these newspapers and, and charging him five dollars, but he wants up giving her twenty dollars. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because you know he, he's very, very nice and generous. Um, and yeah, her name is Maria. He, she wants up becoming Drake's test subjects. So Brock attempts to rescue her, but she attacks him, and then the symbots suddenly went straight into his body. So now that's where he begins to discover Venom. Yes. So he gets to talk to him too. Underneath him all. <laughs> he suddenly transforms into Venom too. So he gets to fight. Um, all the, the bad guys with all, all the security guards and cops all the way around that's, that's working for Drake. So, yes, um, by the time this happens, um, Eddie started to feel very sick. He started eating all these foods. He, he suddenly has a craving. He even eats the chicken that's, <laughs> that's left in, into the garbage. So, yeah. So, he's trying to find out where it came from. And until so, um, suddenly, you know, Venom just saves uh, Brock's life. For all the cops, you know, they were chasing them around. Yeah, he was riding on the motorcycle, you know, with that particular chase all the way down uh, San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. With all these SWAT uh, officers around. So, yeah. We begin to see some weaknesses coming from Brock. It turns out that high-pitched noises and fire can actually affect him. Yeah. I mean, that's what happened when uh, Brock went to a, a local restaurant. He was about to <laughs> eat some uh, lobsters all the way around and spits them out. And yeah, while well, he, he suddenly spots um, you know, Anne and uh, her, her new boyfriend, who's a doctor. The doctor's name is Dan Lewis, who's played by Reed Scott. So he, he actually helps uh, Eddie out and try to see if this will work and see if they can get out the uh, the sim bots out of his body yeah I mean first they have to use the uh, the, the cat scan and <laughs> yeah that, that shocked them completely and then then they had to use a different scanner to see if that will help uh, help the sim bots get out of his body which it did surprisingly but then the Simbot suddenly went straight into uh, the dog, yes, a puppy, until <laughs> just when Brock was about to be taken away by the officers. Yeah. Uh, suddenly Anne decided to help him by, yeah, exactly what I expected, but it was only off screen, so we didn't get to see what happens. 
she took the puppy because she spotted um, the eyes glowing. So my guess is that she probably just kissed him off screen. So that's where we get to see She Venom. I wish we had seen She Venom in the movie more, but again, it's only for a short period of time. But he did save the <laughs> Eddie's life. Uh, even ate the, one of the <laughs> the officers too. Yeah, officer's head. Uh, well, which of course, yes, because uh, you know Venom does uh, does get hungry by eating all their human flesh, or just eats their their heads off. You know, becoming decapitated. So there you go. Yeah, he's such a strong character here. And yes, uh, Venom does speak. Uh, he speaks in a deeper voice. So he gets to tell him what to do. And then Eddie had to go all the way up to the office and at the Transamerica building, you know, just so just so he can give uh, the CEO uh, his proof, all the evidence that he had to write all, all of them down to, uh, for his news report. But he's afraid of heights. <laughs> uh, in that one scene that he and he, he was afraid to actually go all the way down. But, so he decided to take the uh, elevator. <laughs> and then just calls him a pussy. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So he had to escape um, through all the cops and everything. Once again, I keep mentioning that. I know I repeat myself too, but whatever. So, anyway. It was up to uh, Eddie Brock and Venom to stop Drake, who eventually uh, had all the Simbots in his body. So he becomes another Venom, but his name is simply Riot. So yes, this is what leads to a, a fight scene at the end, uh, just as they're about to launch the rocket. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a battle between Venom and Riot. It's what I expected from the movie. Um, it's not bad, not great, but it's fine. Um, it had its funny moments that I did like, and you know the fact that you know when the Eddie Brock is um, you know with Venom, this is where we get to see the the personality right there too. So it's almost like you know Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde right there, but in that particular sense. Um, it's always interesting to see that too. And yeah, I know people even compare this movie to Upgrade. Yeah, that was a new movie where we had the AI stem uh, contacting the yeah, co contacting the guy who's is now quadriplegic. You know, trying to get his revenge on the guys who uh, killed his wife. So yeah, I can see the similarities, but. The difference is, that's more of a, uh, a sci-fi uh, movie, even though they say it's a body horror film, but it doesn't feel like one. But this is a superhero movie, so there's a difference here. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I thought, uh, to be honest, though, I thought uh, Tom Hardy did a fine job playing the Eddie Brock. I mean, sure, he's no toe for grace, but that's okay. I mean, it could be anybody else. So he did the best he could to actually uh, trying to use his American accent to play the role straight. But I definitely love Venom though. Yeah, Venom is also the best part of the movie because uh, the fact that he has a personality too and I love when he has a deeper voice because that's the whole point of the character. He's supposed to be uh, creepy. He has a lot of sharp teeth and he does... Uh, <laughs> He does stick out his longer tongue. You know, he even licks uh, one, of the, yeah, one of the officers, too, one time. And yes, we do get to hear that famous line. But that only happens at the end of the movie. <laughs> he also don't like to be called Parasite, too. <laughs> yeah, it's like... That, that's what he fought, too. He fought the Parasite went inside him, and, and, he, <laughs> and he just says... Parasite! <laughs> they apologize for calling me that. <laughs> All that. 
I did like that scene where in the apartment, you know, he had to confront with the neighbor next door. It was just playing loud music. <laughs> like, I mean, he tries to do it, but he couldn't. And so, by the time he's now under Venom, he finally gets a chance to do it. <laughs> Even though all, all these cops were going after him. And, and he stopped them well, he had, under the control of, of Venom. And then <laughs> he tries to go to another apartment to escape from these guys and just and he just and Venom just covers uh just tries to block the window. Just when they're about to shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> so they have to go jump through new heights and trying to escape. Wow. <laughs> Michelle Williams was alright in the movie. Um, I expected more from her. Uh, Riz Ahmed as Colin Drake, uh, he's he's actually pretty weak as a villain. I mean, I know we ought to go for weaker villains these days, but I guess this is the best they could do. I mean, they could have done a lot better. Uh, the other casts, um, including the Reed Scott and they're alright. I mean, nothing special, but again. <laughs> uh, I know they didn't get Carnage in this one. I, I would have loved to see Carnage uh, joining in, so hopefully we'll be able to see that if they get a sequel. Because they're actually working on one, too. So let's see how that one will turn out. Maybe it'll be better. Yeah, there's even scenes where all these Simbots only go straight into the Asian lady and even the Asian old lady as well before it went straight to the little girl. Yes, a little girl, which then the little girl suddenly possessed into, uh, into Drake. So yes, the little girl actually went straight... So yes, the, the Simbots actually went straight to Drake. I mean, it has its problems, I can understand. I mean, it could have done a little bit better as far as the script goes. Like, I think there could have been more to it. Uh, it, it does feel a bit rush at times, so maybe that was the problem. Um, the soundtrack wasn't anything special either. Yeah, I didn't like the soundtrack as much. and The music was, uh, uh, give or take, not that memorable. But I guess for the sense of humor this movie went for, and, and the action and all that, the action wasn't that bad at all either, so. All I can say is, um, it's decent, so I'll give it a pass. So anyway, I give Venom three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.